Hi, everyone. Um, my talk is about turbulence and free surface of a flow over a rotating disk. And it is about my PhD work supervised by the Professor Adolphe Ratiasson, led in the Atmosphere, Climate, and Ocean Dynamics Laboratory of the University of Antananarivo. So during my talk, you can feel free to interrupt me if you have some questions. So first, let's start to see the outlines. I'm going to start by talking some things about me. Then we are going to see the introduction, the modeling part, and we are gonna end with results and the summary. So, um, I did the license in physics from 2011 to 2014 in the University of Antananarivo. Then after my license, I did my master in physics in the Atmosphere, Climate and Ocean Dynamics Laboratory from 2014 to 2016. And after that, I did my PhD in Earth Energy and Environment Physics Speciality. Both my master and PhDs are in computational fluid dynamics. About workshop and conference I attended, I attended one conference, um, EPMAD 17. It is uh, the ninth high energy physics international conference. And I attended the ASP 2018 um, workshop. After my PhD, I had some teaching experiences at uh, my lab. I teach uh, geophysics, fluid dynamics, and climatic variability. And uh, I will soon teach ge general mathematics in uh, the Haleutic and Marine Sciences Institute of the University of Tuliar. About publications, till now I have three publications. Two of them are HEPMAD Proceedings, Conference Proceedings, and one is a publication in the International Journal of Advanced Research and Innovative Ideas in Education. So let's now start with the introduction. As I said, uh, this work is in the fluid dynamics field. Fluid dynamics can be applied in um, nature flow or flow that we meet in engineering. Nature flows like oceanography, meteorology, hydrology, or and engineering flow like aeronautical or turbo machinery. There are a various types of flow, like jet flow or external flow, but the one concerned in this work is the rotating flow. More precisely, it is the flow of a fluid contained in a cylindrical container of radius air and with initial height H and the characteristics of this cylindrical container is that the, the bottom is rotating and the side walls are, are fixed. The peculiarity of this type of flow is that its free surface shows some polygon patterns called rotating polygon. Here in the figure two, we have polygons with um, eight to three corners. Um, these polygons appears at the free surfaces of the flow. During the last two decades, scientists have investigated the origin and the mechanism behind this phenomenon. In 2003, for a uh, Vatistas, Vatistas showed that for a given rotation speed of the bottom, polygons appear only when the initial height of the fluid is of a specific range. Tafaj et al. 
in 2013 explained the polygon formation as a resonance between gravity waves and of the external region of the flow and centrifugal waves of internal parts. In 2014, Mugel et al have reported a new stability mechanism with Rossby waves and gravity waves with the Rankine vortex model. And in 2017, the flow structure, Young et al showed that the flow structure is made of a central fluid column rotating with the same speed as the bottom and a peripheral zone which contains four parts. These works are only few of all the, the researches led about this subject. The motivation of this work is to identify the parameters affecting the number of polygons corner and the objectives are to build a numerical model of the flow and to investigate the system behavior under the influence of two parameters, Reynolds number and aspect ratio gamma. We are going to see later uh, what are those two parameters. We are going to start now with mathematical and numerical modeling. Mathematical modeling consists of um, establishing the PDEs governing the, the flow. So those PDEs are the mass conservation, the momentum conservation. Uh, here we see the velocity U and the pressure P. Initial, initial condition and boundary conditions. We have three boundary conditions. First, at the rotating bottom. Second, at the fixed side wall. Um, those two boundary conditions show that fluids at those boundary follow the, the motion of the boundary concerned. And the last boundary condition is the free surface condition where H is the height of the free surface and U is the velocity at the free surface. So we have to solve those PDEs and um, we, we got five coupled PDEs, which, is repre which uh, represent difficulties because we have a high number of PDEs to couple. And we have also to deal with turbulence. Why turbulence is a difficulty? Because of its characteristic, we are going to see the characteristics of turbulence. Um, first, it is unpredictable in the sense that it is sensitively dependent on initial conditions that makes it very chaotic and hard to predict. Turbulence, turbulent flow, uh, flows are made of vortices on many scales. Uh, we can see, for example, in, um, in smokes that raise up, that there are some turning um, smokes that these are called vortices or eddies. And the turbulent flow is characterized by eddies of from the biggest scale to the, the smallest scale. Turbulence is very diffusive. Here we have a um, figure which shows a flow in which have been injected a dye. So when the, um, the flow is laminar or non-turbulent, the dye remain with its rectiline trajectory and when the when it's turbulent the the dye is diffused and um, it's the same thing with quantities like energies or velocity it is diffused when the turbulence when the flow is turbulent another characteristic of uh, 
high of a turbulent flow is that it is characterized by high Reynolds number. Reynolds number is the ratio between inertial and viscous forces. Initial forces tend to make the flow more turbulent and viscous forces dissipate energy so that it makes it less turbulent. And the last characteristic of turbulence is that it is dissipative. The energy contained in the biggest eddies are dissipated into smaller and smaller eddies till it is dissipated as heat. So those characteristics of turbulence made that it, uh, we should avoid those difficulty. So for that, we've come some with the physics software um, to avoid the difficulties um, with uh, the, the high number of coupled PDEs. We, we calculated the free surface and the free surface position and shape with the level set method. This method permitted to, to reduce the number of PDEs to, to, to couple. And with the turbulence, we have to model it. So the, the turbulence mod, model we choose is the Jans K omega model. This model consists first to decompose the velocity and pressure in two parts, the mean part here and the fluctuation part. And the same with the pressure, we decompose it with mean part and fluctuation part. And when you introduce those decomposition in the mass conservation and momentum conservation equations, we have the, those two equations, 12 and 13, where we have the mean of velocity and the mean of the pressure. But we have new unknowns called the Reynolds tensor in the Rans K omega model, the Reynolds tensor is modeled as the 14 equation. It expresses that the fluctuation of the velocity is proportional to the mean flow. And the Rans K omega model introduce two additional transport equations for the turbulent kinetic energy K and for the reciprocal turbulent time scale omega. We are going to see later the um, physical signification of those two turbulent terms. So this is the um, system, the PDE system we have to solve with the boundary conditions um, at the rotating bottom and the fixed side wall. Here we have to solve for the mean of the velocity and the pressure and for K and omega. Uh, above the level set method, we use to calculate the free surface shape and position. Mm, let's consider two fluid in contact, fluid one of density rho one and viscosity mu one, fluid two of density rho two and viscosity mu two. The interface, the interface of those two fluids um, is characterized by a discontinuity on the values of the um, the density and the viscosity. So the level set method use, uses this discontinuity to calculate the position and the shape of the free surface. How? 
So it defines a function phi, function phi, where phi is negative in the fluid one, it is positive in fluid two, and it is new at the interface. And we have to solve the transport equation of the function phi, where u is the velocity which drive the, the interface. Once we built the, the mathematical model, the PDEs, we have to solve it uh, numerically. And the method we used is the finite element method. The finite element method is a method which transform PDEs and boundary condition to the matrix system that we can solve, matrix system of types a x equals to b. So it transforms a continued problem to a discrete problem. How? So first, we have to subdivide the domain. It is also, this operation is also called the machine. So we, we subdivide the domain on uh, a certain number of subdomains called element and the point at which every subdomain inter intersect are called the, the node. So we've got node and element. After doing the, the subdivisation, we have to build the nodal approximation. The nodal approximation U uh, the nodal approximation means expressing the, the unknown. So here, the velocity or the pressure, we have to express the unknowns as a function of the values of those unknowns on the nodes. And after the nodal approximation construction, we have to build the elementary matrices The elementary matrices are matrices we have to solve if, if we have to obtain the values of the unknowns on the nodes for one element only. So for obtaining the values in the whole domain, we have to assemble all the, the, the elementary matrices and we have the, the general matrix system. Then after introducing the boundary in condition, we have to solve. Now we are going to see the results. Uh, we are going to start with averaged variables. The average uh, we obtained with the decomposition. So we have the means and then we are going to see the the, the turbulent variables, which, co which contains the information of the fluctuations. In those results, um, four vectors, we plotted the variation of each component, the component of the vectors in horizontal and vertical cut lines. Horizontal cut lines the, are different from the height in the fluid, in the, the flow. And the, the two vertical components, uh, the first is in the middle of the flow and the second is near the side one. So component of vectors, we've taken the values of the component uh, along those cut lines. But for scalar variables, we plot, we directly plot in, um, in horizontal and vertical surfaces, horizontal and vertical uh, planes. And for vectors, we choose to use the cylindrical system. So we have the radial component, the azimuthal component, and the vertical component. For the velocity, 
here we have the radial component, the azimuthal component, and the vertical component. Those components shows the direction of the flow. For example, for radial velocity, uh, the radial component, when it is positive, it means that the flow is outward. Uh, it goes from the center to the side walls. For the azimuthal component, when it is negative, it means that the flow is, the, is rotating in the opposite direction of the, the direction of the bottom. And for vertical component, when it is negative, it shows that the flow is inward. And when it is positive, the flow is upward. After analyzing all the, the velocity components on the cut lines we mentioned before, we obtained four characteristic zones of the flow. The first one is a zone characterized by outward flow, a zone near the rotating bottom. The second one is near the side walls, um, characterized with an upward flow. The third one, uh, an, a zone with inward flow, an upper zone with inward flow, and the last one is a inner part with downward flow. About the pressure, its variation over time shows that it stabilizes over time. Here we have the value of the pressure at different point of different height. Its spatial um, variation shows that the pressure is um, has a hydrostatic variation. It means that it increase with depth and horizontal variation shows an increase in behavior with the radial component. Now we are going to see the vorticity. The vorticity is defined as the curve of the velocity. This quantity permit to quantify the, the rotation in the flow. A flow without vorticity, we, if we consider this fluid particle, if the flow doesn't have vorticity, when this fluid particle evolves in the flow, it remains in the same configuration. But when there is vorticity in the flow, um, the fluid particle tend to rotate so vorticity with vorticity we can quantify the, the rotation in the flow as we've seen in the turbulence characteristic that turbulent flow are made of vortices the vorticity grows with the radial component for every height and it reduces with altitude. Now we are going to see the turbulent variables, which contains the, the information of, of the fluctuations that we didn't take into, into account with the, the averaged variables. So the two turbulent variables we are going to see are the turbulent kinetic energy K and the reciprocal turbulent time scale, time scale omega. Um, the expression of K showed that, show that it contains the fluctuation, the velocity fluctuations. So it can be interpreted as follow. When K increases, it means that fluctuations decreases and turbulence too. And when it decreases, turbulence decreases too. And for the reciprocal turbulent time scale, it has the unit of the inverse of time. 
So it is the inverse of the time after which a vortice or a vertices or vertices or eddies disappear. We've seen in the turbulent characteristic that the vortices disappear, uh, the vortices dissipate into smaller vortices. So omega is the reciprocal dissipation time of eddies. When omega increase, vortices dissipate more and more rapidly. And when it decrease, eddies dissipate less and less rapidly. It tend to persist. The turbulent kinetic energy is increasing with the radial component at the bottom of the cylindrical container. And at the higher altitude, it decreases with the radial component. Vertical planes show that the free surface, the zone near the free surface, is a zone with very high turbulent kinetic energy. So this in this in those in these zones, in this zone, um, fluctuations are very high. Omega is increasing with the radial component in every height. And a vertical plane showing omega shows that at the corner near the fixed tidal and the, the rotating bottom is characterized with very high reciprocal turbulent time scale. So in these zones, turbulent uh, ADs tend to disappear very rapidly. Rotating polygons. Um, the free surface of the flow in a polygonal patterns. We have polygons from 2 to 17 corners. When the polygons appear at the free surface, um, they it changes over time. Let me show you uh, some animation. So the free surface shows polygonal pattern like this. Polygons are changing over time. And and this variation over time, um, we transform it into signals. So we have signals in which value are the number of polygons varying. Uh, over time. And we led some stationary and unit root tests on those signals. And those tests showed that the signals are non stationary. Every signal we've tested showed that the signals are non stationary. We also plotted the correlogram of those signals. Here we have the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation function. We plotted the correlogram to, to see the memory effect in those signals. And the longest memory effect are for the Reynolds number, Reynolds number equals to 10,000 with varying gamma. And the number of lags for which the partial autocorrelation function is significant varies from 0 to 3. 
but mostly it is one. So those memory effects observed here are held in the first lag of the signal. Now we are going to see the influence of Reynolds number on the flow. We've already said that the Reynolds number is the ratio between inertial and viscous forces. And we are going to see the effects of this parameter on the four zones we defined before. In the, uh, let me remind that the Reynolds number is used to, to, to know if a flow is turbulent or not. With high Reynolds number, the flow is turbulent. And of course, in this workflow is turbulent and um, increasing Reynolds number means that turbulence should increase too. And fluctuation should increase, for example. And let's see if that happens in our results. In the third zone, the zone near the, the rotating bottom, Velocity grows with Reynolds number. Pressure lowers. Vorticity increases. And velocity fluctuation grows with increasing Reynolds number. Vortices dissipate more rapidly, except in a small internal part here. In the second zone, uh, the zone near the side wall, velocity grows with the Reynolds number. Pressure too, but it stabilizes when the Reynolds number attains the value of 20,000. Vorticity grows um, near, in the zone near the side wall. And it is null in high altitude. Here we have the radial azimuthal and vertical component of vorticity. Velocity fluctuation grows with Reynolds number at low altitude, and it decreases at high altitude. And Vortices dissipate more and more rapidly near the bottom, but far from the bottom, it doesn't vary much with the Reynolds number. In the third zone, the upper zone with inward flow, the radial component of the velocity and the vertical component increase with uh, the Reynolds number but the azimuthal component is decreasing. Pressure stays constant. And concerning the vorticity at the third zone, at uh, h equals to h out of four, or at the quarter of the initial length of food, Vorticity stays constant in the center and it grows with the Reynolds number near the side wall. And at the free surface, the radial component of vorticity stays constant. The azimuthal. Asina, are you there? Yeah. It looks frozen. Yeah, I think there's a um, bandwidth problem. Mm -hmm. So let's um, 
that's good for her to uh, to reconnect. She still seemed connected, but but she will disappear very soon. Yeah, she just disappeared. So yeah, she restarted. I wonder why the rotation is always clockwise. Yeah, just when she was uh, speaking about this uh, stability or the background, so, uh, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, sorry, everyone. Someone unplugged my PC. I'm rebooting it, and uh, it will take a few, only a few seconds. Okay, no problem. I'm going to step away for just a second. Yeah, I surely me too. <laughs> That's why we wait for her. So is there anybody so working also with her on the same field? Which is really interesting. From uh, Madagascar, maybe. Or maybe not.
Sorry for the interruption. No, Just sorry. go ahead. Yes. So we start at the third zone, I think. Here. We are here with the three nodes numbers influence in the, the third zone, the zone with inward flow. So the radial component of vorticity stays constant with varying the nodes number. Its azimuthal component grows with the nodes number and the vertical component lowers. Concerning the variation of k and omega at uh, H equal to H of four, velocity fluctuations decrease with the Reynolds number in the inner part and it increases near the side wall. At the half of the height of the free surface, it decreases everywhere. And at the free surface, it doesn't very much. Um, at h equals to h of four, the time dissipation of vortices grows with the node's number in the inner part here, and it lowers in the outer part. At the half of the free surface height, it grows, and it doesn't very much at the free surface. In the last zone, the zone, the inner zone with inward velocity, the radial component of the velocity grows with the Reynolds number near the bottom here. It decreases from, from it. And the azimuthal component grows near the bottom and far from it, it is null and the vertical component increases with the node number. Concerning the vorticity, which tells us about the rotation in the fluid, it increases with the Reynolds number only near the bottom, but far from the bottom, um, the vorticity is new and doesn't vary. Velocity fluctuation so that turbulence decreases with the Reynolds number in the fourth zone and vortices disappear more and more rapidly near the bottom and their dissipation time doesn't vary far from the rotating bottom. Um, at the free surface, the Reynolds number influence is as follow. Those box plots represent the box plot of the signals. Four signals, uh, four different values of Reynolds number we have nodes number from 6,000 to 60,000. And this plot shows that the signal's characteristic doesn't very much with the Reynolds number. We have um, quasi the same um, interquartile distance, the same mean and max. So signals characteristics doesn't vary with the Lord's number. And we are going to end the result part with the aspect ratios influence. The aspect ratio is defined as the ratio between the height of the 
the initial height of the fluid, the height of the free surface, and the radius of the cylindrical container. In the first zone, the zone near the bottom, the radial and the azimuthal component increases with gamma, far from the side also in these zones. And near the side wall, it stays, they stay constant. And the vertical component doesn't vary. The pressure decreases, then stabilizes. Vorticity stays constant. And at the center of the flow, near the center, velocity fluctuation lowers with gamma, and vortices tend to persist when gamma near the sidewall, velocity fluctuations and vortices dissipation stay constant. Um, Hasina. Behind you there, yes. there is a lot of noise. Are you at home or is, there, is it? No, I'm in a public place. I'm in an ah. internet shop. Okay, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, the velocity component, the radial component, lowers with gamma here near the bottom. Then at a certain altitude, it grows till the free surface. The azimuthal component lowers with gamma near the bottom and near the free surfaces, it stays near. And for the vertical component, it decreases with the aspect ratio near the bottom and at some altitude till the free surface, it decreases when gamma increases. The, still in the in zone two, the pressure lowers, then stabilizes uh, from gamma equals to 0.9. Vorticity decreases. And the variation of the turbulent kinetic energy shows two group of curves. In each group, the curves are parallel to each other. And the two groups show the same variation. There's first um, a decreasing, then an increasing. So we can say that gamma makes the velocity fluctuation decrease and growth rate increase. Here, the decrease rate um, increase, increases and the growth rate to and vortices disappear less and less rapidly with increasing gamma. That means that when the, the aspect ratio increases, vortices tend to persist um, persist in the time. In the third zone, velocity lowers with gamma. Pressure decrease, then stabilize when gamma attains the value of 0.9. And vorticity lowers to. Um, for the variation of k and omega of k first, uh, it also shows two groups of curves which are parallel to each other and the variation of those two groups are different. So the aspect ratio makes the velocity fluctuation lowers, but it, it affects some changes in the variation of the, the kinetic turbulent energy. At H equal to H at 4, vortices disappears less and less rapidly when gamma grows. And at the free surface, they disappear more rapidly near the side wall. And in the last zone, the inner zone with, uh, with 
download flow. The radial component of velocity grows near the bottom here and near the surface, the free surface too. And it decreases in this region. The azimuthal component lowers and the vertical component lowers near the, the bottom and it grows near the free surface. Always in the zone four, vorticity lowers. And here with the variation of K and omega, we still have the two groups of curves. Gamma makes the growth rate of the fluctuation increase with altitude and vortices disappear less and less rapidly in the fourth zone. For the signals we obtained with uh, the variation of the number of corners, um, this plot shows that the characteristics of the signals vary when we vary the T aspect ratio gamma. And for gamma equals to one, the interquartile distance is maximum. That means that when gamma equals to one, uh, we have the most types of polygon, the most type of polygons. So to summarize, numerical simulation of a flow in a rotating bottom cylindrical container was made. Lance K omega model was used for turbulence modeling. Free surface shape was calculated with the level set method and the finite element method permitted the numerical calculation. The flow depicts four characteristic zones. The first is, um, is near the rotating bottom with outward flow, high pressure, high vorticity, high fluctuation, and rapid vortices dissipation. The second, near the side wall, with upward flow and low fluctuation. The third, an upper zone with inward flow, low vorticity, high fluctuation, and slow vortices dissipation. And the last one, an inner zone, an inner zone with downward flow, with low vorticity and slow vortices dissipation. For the free surface, it shows polygons varying over time. Signals are non stationary, and with various values of gamma, the longest memory effect is often observed when the Reynolds number, <coughs> sorry, when the Reynolds number equals to 10,000. The memory effect is held in the first lag most of the time. Reynolds number intensifies the velocity and the vorticity. At free surface, fluctuations and their dissipation time doesn't don't vary as a function of Reynolds number and the signal's characteristics either. For the, the influence of the aspect ratio parameter, the, this aspect ratio intensifies the vorticity near the bottom. The fluctuation variation are changed when the matter is. Vortices persist more and more when gamma increase, expect at the bottom. And as perspectives, we propose to confront the results with experimental ones to know which turbulence model is more accurate. And to use other turbulence model to obtain information not given by the RANS types model. And at last, we propose to extend the study to non-playing free surface. Uh, thank you to everyone. I am ready if you have some questions or remarks.
Hey, Hasina. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, apologies for the interruption for you, and I, I'm sure you didn't like it. But yes. we, yeah, we understand. Um, questions or comments? So, so Hasina, so what was the motivation to start with a cylindrical surface or a cylindrical volume first? The, the, the tank, <clears throat> you mean to ask about the tank, which yes, contains yes. the... Yes. yes. Um, uh, it's simply because uh, of the phenomenon happening at the free surface. It's the flow that is driven in cylindrical tanks that shows those polygons, the, those rotating polygons. Okay, so then when you move to a, a, a more planar surface, um, what, what do you expect there to is that we, what, what, yeah, what do you expect to be the difference, at least in terms of describing the problem? When we move to non-plane free surface, yes, um, we expect to have uh, polygons that remain more longer because we've um, the plane uh, free surface we have uh, polygons varying very very rapidly over time. So we expect to have uh, a more uh, polygons that appears more, more, that appears at a longer time that we've played free surface. Could you go to page 61? Um, not exactly the one that go to 60. <laughs> yeah, I forgot exactly where. Um, uh, 60, could you go uh, down uh, in the page number? Yes, yes. Here, for example, um, do you, could you, could you explain a little bit the structure in the in the curves? Uh, like if you, if I take the black and the green right now, the, there is, some fluctuation downwards, and do you could how do you explain those? Is with, with this first, um, or even yeah, yeah, any one of them. Like if I take the the middle one, the B, you see the black curve. It has those okay. yeah those structures, ridges. What are, what are they? What is that? You mean that why the curves are not smooth? Yes, yes, that's right. Mm. Um, I think it is because the variation of the the, the vorticity. Say again, please. Mm. Because of the variation of the vorticity, mm -hmm. it is not varying smoothly. So, but is do you? Uh, but for example, right? If I take if I take the the, the, the black curve after zero point one, you have a, a zero point one. You have that sharp step down after zero point mm -hmm. one. Yes, is that is that physical or uh, you said it's due to the variation? Um, I think it's because of the side wall here. We have a cut line. Yes. The, the horizontal cut, cut line. So here is the center of the cylindrical container. Yes. And here we have the side wall. Yes. So near the side wall, which is fixed, um, vorticity or velocity uh, tend to, to be null, tend to zero we, when we approach the fixed side wall. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why it, uh, it decreases. Um, like this. Okay, no, but you know what I'm, what I'm, what I, what I mean. Just, mm -hmm. just after zero point one, before you get to the side wall, 
you have that vertical black line going down. Black, down, going down, down. Yeah, that Here. exactly there. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Are you asking if you actually spread that out? Would it be a straight line or would it be a V? Would it have some resolution if it's if you look yeah, at right. it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What exactly is going on at that uh, at that at that point? Is uh, yeah. Maybe if it is. Uh, to extend more the to, to extend work. the scale, you see yes. a structure. Yes. There. yes. So is it due to one of the parameters you feel? Because this is all due to your PDE and the different variable that you have there, isn't it? So maybe in the the, the equation solving, there are some that are less stable, and it explains mm. why this black is really much more sharp than the others. Mm. Could it be due to the pressure or um, as well being closer to the, yeah? Yes, maybe. Maybe it's due to that. It, it's not easy to interpret huh? that. Uh, yes. But indeed, all the others are very smooth. So this is why I guess that here we think like, oh, what is happening? What can be the explanation from that as well? Because it has everything is to be explained as well on the phenomenon point of view. So yes. what is happening there? And exactly as you said, I mean, this uh, those shape are typical when you study turbulence. So this is really a lot of uh, good work that you did there. That's excellent. Thank and you. looking at uh, the, um, the different so way you addressed it, uh, just wanted to check. Um, you didn't mention the temperature, for instance, much. So did you try to check what it could be as an influence? Um, we didn't in this work, but maybe with later work, we can introduce uh, temperature variation. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, here we consider um, that the temperature doesn't vary. Doesn't vary, that's why. So all the parameters, they are all multifunction as well. So typically this is with the density and the density would depend on the I mean, pressure temperature quite often. So it's good to have the pressure there and having, and maybe the equation as well of energy, the energy conservation or something like that could potentially as well find ways to. Sir? The, for the energy. Okay. Yeah. Because that, that could be an interesting way as well for, for getting a better modelization or more complete modelization. Okay. And then I was curious to see, did you try also to experimentally make some correlation or to try to find, because there are some systems, for instance, with particle image, velocimetry or different mm. things where you could find a way to model and potentially to cross check as well. Those ones will be very difficult to get for sure, but maybe some of the talk you had uh, in the, on the page 60, Oh, this is this one. Yes, exactly. So that was what, um, yeah, the understanding on how you would see also if you had some windows orchestra. You can hear you very well. Sorry. Yes. I cannot hear what you said, Christine. So, did you think about any way to model by experimental setup? Um, we didn't have the time to consider an experimental work yet. Uh, yeah, it would be great if we have some experimental uh, results. That could be very interesting. Uh, yes. So, Hasina, in terms of experimental results, <clears throat> um, where do you? expect them to come from? It's like, which data would you compare your result to? What kind of data would you, would you use? You have to, 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 to build the, the system and uh, we can with some method that uh, Dr. Christine have mentioned, we, have, we can get the, the velocity of, in the in the flow, and we can compare the velocity that we 
we've got with this sim, uh, the, this numerical sim, simulation with the experimental ones. Yeah, no, in so, terms of <clears throat> like, in term, is there like any practical data in uh, some engineering um, or mechanical engineering or any type of engineering where, for example, if you have, you could use right now that if somebody has that data, you could compare you that. Mean, um, data coming from engineering configuration that all, already exists? That's right, yeah, which you could say that uh, and you, have, you, you could compare it with uh, mm. such and such model, either it's flow dynamics in in, in, in building vehicles or in, uh, in, in uh, air travel, uh, you know, any system, yeah. any practical system that exists now, if you were to have that data, you, you can make some comparison, even if it is not completely the same, the same system. Is there anything mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that exists? Types of flow is used in, I don't remember, but I've already seen it. Yes, I think in um, turbo machinery, turbo machinery uh, configuration, we have this type of system of rotating disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the car industry or places like this. Mm, yes. Because it would be good indeed to do the other way, like looking at one way that they had make some measurement, and then you can find with your model a way to simulate it as well. And then you can find ways to crochet. Because the problem is that experimental, it's really difficult to set up. So it's best yes. to do something, and then you benchmark your model against those experimental measurements. Like this, you you don't like uh, have too much worry about will it work, how to make the measurement, because this is another PhD by mm itself. -hmm. Other questions or other comments? So for, for just for the, the, the computing capacity, because it takes a lot of, uh, of memory as mm -hmm. well, so as you said. So you had some ways as well to lighten it. So meaning that what, what were you using uh, in terms of uh, computer? Did you use the cloud or did you have uh, access as well to a computer form or something like this? No, I only used my computer. Yes, and it took, uh, it varies from a few hours to, to one day uh -huh. simulation. So that's tricky and you have to wait to be yes. able to see this or not, it's good. Yes. Yeah. And we have to deal with, uh, with electricity cutting and everything, yes. Yeah, that's good. It would be very interesting to see indeed how or where to apply it because then you can really see. So is there any plan, do you have any project as well with the university to potentially have a follow up of this research? Uh, not yet. We have no. So, Hasina, are you looking for postdoc positions now? Yes, I am. I actually already uh, found one, and I'm waiting for the result. Okay. And did you check with the SCTP? Because I know that they have quite some interesting potential. Yes, there. yes, I, I often uh, uh, check the, the website for postdocs. Yeah. Um, other questions, uh, other comments? I thought it was a very nice talk. I really appreciate the your explanation of things. I learned a great deal about Reynolds numbers and about uh, fluid flow. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Yeah, it's uh, Hasina. It was it was very good work. Um, I hope I hope you do get a postdoc position soon. And uh, let us know how we can help you. Um, okay. You know, to to in the progress of of your of your research.
And uh, congratulations on, uh, on your successful defense. Thank you very much. Excellent. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. as well on that. Okay, anybody else has any comments or any question? Hasina, is there anything, uh, anything else? Um, how's, how's the COVID organic going in Madagascar? <laughs> it's very uh -huh. freaky out here. <laughs> uh -huh. um, many cases show symptoms, but then after, after the test, the test revealed as negative. Mm -hmm. Like my case, I showed symptoms, then I made the test and it was negative. So I don't know what to think about it. Because you were taking COVID organic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. So, so the number of cases are going down or are they, are they No, no, no. We are in the middle of the second flag now. Mm. Second wave. Second wave. Mm -hmm. So for two weeks, it, the, the number of Ks grows, grows and grows. And uh, we don't have a lockdown till now. Mm -hmm. We just protect ourselves as, as we can. Yeah, OK. <clears throat> Okay, let's let's hope that the situation stabilizes and that. Uh, what about the vaccine? Is Madagascar getting vaccine soon? Mm, no, the president made a speech those yesterday, or I don't remember, and uh, he said that we wouldn't, he wouldn't let the vaccine go in, in our country. We only use COVID organics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> if it is working, that is good. <laughs> yeah, we, we hope it's working. But um, we have to deal with the, the new variant of COVID. Mm. And we, we don't know yet how it will, if, we, if it will work or not with the new variant. Uh -huh. <clears throat> All right, so anybody else has any other comments or anything? All right, so if not, uh, we, we, we will stop here. And uh, uh, good luck to you, uh, Hasina, and uh, let us know if you, we can support you or help you in, in any way or uh, in your progression of, uh, to, post, to a postdoctoral level. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks for being available to, to us uh, and congratulations again for all your hard work. Thank you. Photo? Are you going to take a photo of all of us? Oh, yes. Um, let's, uh, thank you. <laughs> so I think uh, we, should, uh, we, should take a, we should take a screenshot. Um, if uh, everybody wants to... Uh, uh, show their faces and show themselves. Um, then, uh, uh, so I will take another one. Uh, Hasina, where are you? I, okay, good, you are there. Excellent. So um, we will put that uh, on uh, on the Endico agenda page as well as the recording of the session and the slides that you sent you sent us. Okay, so good luck to you and uh, okay. thanks for everybody's participation. Stay safe, Thank everyone. You. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, Messina.